Texas Rangers manager, the team that's on a four-game winning streak. It is Bruce Bochy. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, guys. How we doing? We're doing great. I'm going to make you pick one of these four awesome wins since the break. Which one's been your favorite? Oh my goodness, boy, that's a that's a tough one. Uh, I mean, what you know, one a great little run there. You know, these past four games. Uh, you know, what three times we came from behind. You know, I, it's hard to pick one, but I tell you what, last night was I thought big for us. Uh, you know, facing a guy like McClanahan, and I mean, we looked dead in the water there, and with you know the way he was throwing the ball, which a lot of teams do, trust me. And uh, you know, we got uh, you know get the hit by Robbie, and then uh, Duran, who's really uh, you know had his ups and downs recently, uh, came through with the big hit there. Uh, uh, so it's uh, it's always good to be uh, an ace. Uh, uh, you need good pitching when that happens. We got that. We had uh, Smitty down. Leclerc goes out there in a really tight situation. I just thought he handled himself so well. Of course, you saw Big Chappie. So, uh, you know, I, I guess I go to the last one. It, it, it's kind of like what, what Brady said uh, when they asked him what, what uh, you know, his favorite uh, ring was, the championship ring. And his answer was always the next one. So <laughs> I guess I go with the latest one. All right, so so I'll, I'll go with the next one if you ask me. So predicting an exciting game tonight is what I'm hearing. Absolutely, now, absolutely. But wouldn't it be better for all of our blood pressures if we could just get back to getting out ahead 8-1 to one <laughs> early? You'd like that too, right? Well, I mean, you're talking, you know, to the right guy on that. Uh, <laughs> the blood pressure thing, yeah, I mean, that. <laughs> That's uh, a lot easier on all of us. But I, I'll say this. It, it's it's really good experience for these guys uh, to play in these type games. I expect to play uh, in more of these games, uh, especially when you're looking at the teams we're playing, um, you know, coming up right in front of us. But really for the rest of the season, uh, um, you know, learn to, you know, just realize how important every little thing uh, can make a difference, whether it's your positioning, moving guys, uh, drawing a walk. Uh, I mean, a couple of days ago, you know, we, Josh Young got that big hit to win the game, but that started with a, uh, a base on balls by uh, Marcus, uh, you know, getting on base, you know, down. The momentum uh, gets going. So little things like that is what I'm talking about. We were having a conversation earlier in the show about you know, obviously Chapman's throwing the ball exceedingly hard, but about how radar guns have changed over the years. And if you took pitchers like Nolan Ryan came up, for example, you might be able to add three to five miles per hour to what they were clocking at him at back then. Do you ever look at Chapman or pitchers like that and think in your mind of comparisons between Nolan Ryan in terms of how hard they throw? Oh, I'd say they're really close. You know, I was fortunate to be able to, I played with Nolan and caught him a couple of times, a few times. And, uh, um, yeah, the velocity's got to be pretty close. Uh, now, I, I do think the guns are, are a little quicker. I don't know how much. I don't know what they call the old uh, radar guns, a ray or something. But, anyway, supposedly, uh, you know, they get the reading toward home plate when uh, the velocity came down a little bit versus uh, when you released the ball. But, you know, there's some arms here that uh, are incredible. I mean, they, they would have been throwing, you know, around 100, uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago. I, I, I don't doubt that, but I, I do think, uh, you know, it's it's begun a little quicker now. I want to go back uh, last night, Bochy, to, to that game and that moment in particular when Araldus Chapman's putting on the, the show that he was putting on. Do you think, like, the in that dugout, that that carried over, that energy carried over because Josh Young opens up with a double right after that? Was he riding the vibes off of what Chapman had just done? You know what? I, I, I agree with you. I, I think uh, uh, a player like uh, uh, Chappie, he, he does do a lot for the club. He goes out there. Now, let's be honest. We, we've had some issues the first half uh, you know, with our bullpen. and It just sends a sense of confidence throughout the team and uh, – you know, they realize, hey, you know, we, we have a bullpen that can match up with uh, other teams. And, uh, you know, because of, you know, Chapman getting here, the way, uh, of course, Smitty and LeClerc and, and you know, Sporzy's down now. So, you know, we, we're getting a better handle on it, a better feel on it. But to, to your point, yeah, I, I think without question, yeah, it does a lot for uh, the whole club. 
So, Boach, everybody goes through a time where they struggle after Simeon's 25-game hit streak. He had a little bit of a time where he was in a lull. Now, that's a guy who's played, you know, seven, eight years of Major League Baseball. Zeke Duran, starting off and kind of finishing off the first half, starting off the second half, was in a little bit of a slump. Obviously, last night he comes through with the huge home run in the sixth inning. How do you mentally handle different guys going through a little bit of where they could be lacking confidence because they're just going over for multiple days in a row or just not making solid contact. How do you handle maybe a guy who this is his first year in the major leagues versus a guy it's 10th year in the major leagues? Well, well, first of all, you're right. I mean, they're, they're all different. Uh, it's not one size fits all. And, you know, you got a guy with experience like Marcus, uh, you know, he can handle, uh, you know, those ups and downs. Uh, but I'll be honest, uh, Marcus and I, we, we talked in uh, Washington. I just want to touch base with him. You know, the last thing I, I wanted to do as uh, his manager is to not be there for him. Uh, if he needed a break or anything, just kind of see where he's at. And, uh, so we had a conversation now with uh, Duran. It's more, you know, I'm, I think it's important we keep his confidence up. Uh, you know, he's going through uh, – you know, some things he probably hasn't gone through a lot. And for example, when I pinch hit for him a couple of days ago or, you know, uh, two days ago with uh, Robbie, you know, I brought him uh, beside me on the bench and just told him, so listen, I, I'm going to pinch hit here. This is not, you, you're playing tomorrow. You're playing left field tomorrow against one of the best pitchers in the game, but I'm going to pinch hit now. You're going to get this right. You know, just more, it was more just let him know, hey, I, I'm behind you and everything, but I'm going to make this move coming up because I knew a right-hander was coming in. And I, it was evident. Uh, it was obvious uh, uh, that he, he was off. He, he's getting out of sync a little bit. But uh, I thought he tightened things up. I thought it was better yesterday, and uh, he's going to play today. So last night he hits the home run in the sixth inning. In the eighth inning, you get the leadoff double by Grossman. Nobody out, runner on second base. Duran coming up off of the home run. Was there any thought about possibly uh, getting a bunt down to the third base side to get the winning run to third base with one out? Yeah, uh, it, the thought was more in Duran's head than mine, to be honest, because, you know, afterward he he was uh, he was telling uh, Bees, he goes, yeah, I was looking for the bunt. Well, Here's how I look at it. Uh, I mean, the guy just hit a two-run homer uh, to tie the game. Uh, he's facing a left-hander. Uh, I didn't want to put that on Tavares. Now, you know, as soon as they guarantee that, you know, we get the score if we bunt on the third, I I'll do it. I promise you. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, with the, you know, with the, you know, this guy's got good stuff out there. You know, they're going to be playing infield in. And uh, I'd rather take three shots at it. And my first shot was the guy that hit the home run to tie the game at handles left-handers uh, really well. And also, uh, I'll add this, you know, I, I do think, you know, major league hitter you know, should be able to drive the ball the other way. You know, you don't have to get them over by a bunt. You know, you can hit the ball the other way or deep fly ball. So there's other ways, and, and we call it five ways, actually, to get the guy to third. And uh, unfortunately, he struck out and became a, you know, empty at bat. But now I – I, I'm not going to put him in that situation. And, of course, the Bears end up, you know, that's a tough at bat. He struck out. And it's just – it's. I, I'd rather take three shots there. Now, if that would have been Tavares, to be honest, and man on second, nobody out with the top of my order coming up, yeah, I probably would have been him over. Now, we just wanted to give you a heads up, and maybe you could help us corroborate this. The word on the street is that – Wyatt Langford is signing his contract today. Maybe he already has. He, I don't know if if you can confirm. Can you confirm that for us? I cannot uh, on whether he um, he has signed his contract. No, I I can't yet. Uh, um, you know, I've been uh, down here, uh, you know, working on uh, today's game, but I know he's here, and uh, he, it's going to be good to see him. I look forward to meeting him. Uh, you know, we're we're all excited about this signing. Uh, you know, we got to see him a lot, uh, of course, uh, you know, playing at Florida, but uh, I'm just saying on TV. But uh, anyway, uh, I know our, our front office is excited. Uh, we're excited. Uh, looking forward to watching him. Uh, he's going to take some BP, uh, but I guess we have to get get him signed first, don't we? In, in case you're locked up for the next two hours or so, he's coming on our afternoon <laughs> show, the G-Bag Nation at 245. Are there any questions you want us to go ahead and get in there for you? 
<laughs> yeah, just, just just ask him if he thinks he's ready uh, uh, you know, to join us up here. No, but all kidding aside, uh, I, I think he, he's going to be on a fast pace. Uh, you know, all the things I've heard about him, the makeup, uh, of course, uh, you know, the talent that he has uh, to hit the baseball and uh, just playing the game. Uh, we're, again, very excited that, uh, you know, he, he was available when, when uh, we uh, had our pick. Bruce Bochy joining us here on the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. And Mike always talks about Colby Lewis in, with the mindset of he always kind of pitched to the scoreboard, like whatever the score was, he was keeping you close in a game. And I'm just wondering how Dane Dunning, like how does he do it? Mm. This dude, we talk about this almost every week. He he pitches a, a number of innings, and then all of a sudden it's a solid start, and you are you have a chance to win a game because of what he's how he started the game for you. Yeah, I agree. He's pretty amazing, really, uh, how he he's uh, almost robotic and how he goes about his business. Uh, you know, you don't see a lot of emotion in him. He just uh, goes out there and pitches. And like you said, at the end of the day, it, it's it's a good start. Uh, you know, the last start in Washington, you know, we gave up two of his runs. He's a hell away from having a quality start, but manager took him out for some reason. But, uh, <laughs> but no, seriously, he uh, – He's been really solid, hasn't he? And, uh, you know, he's a pitcher, you know, and and he was a little amped up last night. I mean, you saw the ball was up the first inning, uh, didn't quite get where he wanted. He yanked, um, you know, pitch he's trying to get away. He uh, yanked the middle end to uh, Nate's brother. (laughs) They uh, left the ball part, but after that, he settled down and, and here he was, you know, through seven innings, two runs. Uh, I mean, what what a job he's done. I mean, on both the relief side, you saw what he did for our bullpen. He kept it in order, kept it settled. When he went and started, uh, you know, that put us in a little bit of a disarray there. But, uh, you know, he's that, that's how good he's been all year. So, Boach, I'm just a fan now, and right now watching this Ranger team, especially after the break, it just feels like a magical team, a magical season, that something special is going to happen to the 2023 Texas Rangers. I know you're in the grind, and today's the new day, and today you're concentrating on the game. And then there's some seasons recently where I'm going, man, this thing really sucks. (laughs) Uh, And I'm just wondering, as a manager, Mm -hmm. do you sometimes get a sense of, man, this is going to be a really good year, or, man, this season sucks? Oh, even before spring training and then uh, when I got to spring training, got to know the guys, watching them, uh, I felt really, really good about this uh, ball club. I I knew this ball club would uh, be a team that uh, would be making some noise, uh, that could contend. Uh, now, I'm, granted, we have a lot of baseball left. We haven't done anything, but uh, uh, there was no doubt in my mind this was a really good team. And you know, unfortunately, we you know we lost Jacob, but uh, because of you know what Dunning's done, that softened that blow. But yeah, I, I felt that. But uh, and then you see, you know, the numerous times that uh, this club has bounced back off some, I mean, horrendous losses and. Uh, and of course, uh, you know how we finished before the break to come back and and play like this, and uh, and we need to continue to play like this, as you know, in front of us, uh, it's nothing but good team. So, uh, but you know, I I, I just uh, I've always felt good about this club, and uh, you know, we'll we'll just keep going out there doing our thing. And we'll see what happens. Can you remember a year where you felt really good about a team, and it just nothing went right for you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Geez. And we've had a couple of those. I know, gee, my second year, my, actually my third year after 96, uh, we won our division in San Diego in uh, 97. I mean, we just got banged up with the pitching staff. Uh, I mean, we couldn't do anything right. Uh, um, we actually scored runs, but we scored runs because we got so far behind. It, you know, they put in their tenth and eleventh, twelfth pitcher in there, and we, you know, scored some runs at the end. But uh, uh, you know, we went from first place to you know toward the bottom there, and that was a year. You know, especially as a young manager, you go, okay, I, I, I think I got this figured out. Well, as soon as you think that, this game will humble you. So I'll, I'll never think that. Trust me. Now, Mike was bringing up, we were talking about, obviously each game counts exactly the same and there's still a long way to go in the season. But I was curious, before the series started yesterday, is there a little bit of extra energy since it is Tampa Bay, a team that until the Braves came on was pretty much recognized as the best team in baseball all year? 
Yeah, I, I'm with Mike. I, you know, I that's brought up to me a lot. You know, this is a big series. Well, I don't know what series is in a big series because they all count the same. And, you know, we lost some tough games against teams we – you know, we thought we were better, well, and we know we're better than. And uh, it's just baseball, and it happens. But you can't ever drop your guard on anybody. Uh, now, do you get more ramped up? I, I, I'll say this. Uh, you know, for Monday night, it, I mean, as loud as it was last night, yeah, these it, it ramps our guys up. You know, they feed off that. Uh, there's no question the fans play a, a part in this, so that's helped out. But you know, after this, now um, we. You probably will say the same thing about the Dodgers coming in town or the Astros. You know, when Houston yeah. comes back yeah. playing the Astros and those things. So, you know, it, it, that, it never stops. And uh, I know yesterday, you know, the question was, you know, it's just a measuring stick. Well, we've been saying that for two months. So, you know, hey, it's, it's every game. That it's, it's critical. Now, you win that game, it goes in the win column, and that's how you have to look at it. Well, you guys have won four straight. We're very much looking forward to tonight's game and always appreciate talking with you, good sir. All right, guys. Always good talking with you. Thanks.